All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the intensity of gamma radiation. So let's just talk about what we know about gamma radiation already. So we know that gamma radiation is the emission of high frequency, high energy photons. We already know about that. We know that gamma radiation is highly penetrating, so it can go through large amounts of objects. It can only be stopped by really thick layers of lead or concrete, that sort of thing. But so in contrast to that, it's got very low ionization because as we know when we looked at the um, excitation by absorption of photons, we know that they can only have one-to-one -one interaction with objects, whereas something like alpha radiation can ionize like 10,000 uh, different things for one alpha particle. Gamma is really low. We also know the stars are constantly giving off ionizing radiation like UV, gamma, x-rays, that sort of thing, they're always being continuously given off. And yet we're still alive, we haven't all got cancer. What's going on there? And another key thing that we already should know is that the intensity is the number of photons per meter squared arriving at it, or sometimes you might see it, so your photon per meter squared. And this plays an important role in why we're still alive, why we're not constantly, obviously, we have the ozone layer protecting us from UV, but there's nothing that can stop X-rays or gamma rays coming through our atmosphere. But there's something else at play, which is the reason we can survive. So let's have a look at that. All right, so on the right-hand side here, I've got a diagram here. Now, this is obviously a two-dimensional diagram, but imagine that this is in three dimensions. So in the middle here, I've got a source of gamma radiation. And we, if we go out here to the radius 1 or, or R1, we've got a sphere with radius R1. We also have this sphere with radius R2. Now, what I've said here is the radius 2 is approximately twice the size of R1. So if we know intensity is the number of photons per meter squared, we need to know what the surface area of those spheres is, because then we can work out what the intensity is there. So the surface area of a sphere, a sphere is 4 pi r squared. For those of you interested where that comes from, what happens is we know the volume of a, a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So that's the volume. So to get the surface area, we integrate that with respect to r, and that gives you 4 pi r squared. Okay, so that's how that's where that's come from. Those of you who are asking why I haven't added a c on the end, go away. You're just being quibbling and annoying because you just obviously have to put numbers on your integral and then you don't need the c. So that's what the surface area is. So let's look at the surface area with the radius r1. So we our surface area is 4 pi r1 squared. And then let's look at the surface area of r2. Now we know that r2 is 2r1, so we can just substitute 2r1 into the equation. So the surface area of the second one by 2r1 squared, which is equal to 4 pi 4r1 squared. So what we can see here is that when we go from R1 to R2, sorry, I should have said where this comes from, so 4 pi R2 squared, because we're looking at the area, and we subbed in the 2R1 for that R2. So what we get is that by doubling our radius, our area has times by 4. So if the area is times by 4, that means our intensity has quartered because obviously your area is on the bottom line. So by doubling the radius, your area has got to be a quarter, in, sorry, the, intent, the area is four times and your intensity therefore is a quarter, which is where the inverse square equation comes from because what you should know is that the intensity of your radiation is equal to the intensity at your source, which we call I0, and that there's a constant involved which you can work out and then obviously to r squared so 
we've got another inverse square ratio and if you're anything like me when I studied inverse square I was just like is anything not an inverse square law? No, every, pretty much everything is an inverse square law A2. Just remember that then it makes things a lot easier. Lots of inverse square laws. Okay, so that's the equation which governs intensity. So what if we want to measure the intensity of a source for instance?